Whether used year-round or seasonally closed, many Forest Service buildings, because of their rural settings, can be at risk for a rodent infestation. In the western U.S., the C. nombre virus is the causative agent for Hantavirus cardiopulmonary syndrome, otherwise known as HCPS. When given the opportunity, deer mice will readily infest buildings and can spread Hantavirus via feces, urine, and saliva. Deer mouse droppings are about one quarter inch long, typically much smaller than those of chipmunks, squirrels, and other rodents. Risk reduction is directly related to deer mouse exclusion. Michelle Rugebrink, U.S. Forest Service, Pacific Southwest Region, Occupational Health and Safety Manager. Michael Niemela, Senior Public Health Biologist, California Department of Public Health, Vector Borne Disease Section. So Mike, given the serious health concerns of HCPS, Minimizing our exposure to deer mice is an important health and safety concern. So how would Forest Service employees minimize their risk to hantavirus? Well, Michelle, HCPS is normally acquired when people work or live in deer mouse infested buildings or other enclosed structures. We normally become infected when we breathe in virus contaminated particles that have been stirred up into the air. Infections are rare, but one out of three people who become infected with the virus will die. There is no cure. Reducing contact with mouse excreta is the best way to prevent hantavirus infection. This video will demonstrate how to look for evidence of rodent infestation in buildings, how to identify potential entry points, and how to effectively exclude rodents from entering and occupying a building. Periodically check buildings and rooms for signs of rodent infestations. Seeing live or dead mice inside usually indicates a substantial infestation. Signs of infestations can include a nest of shredded fibers, gnaw marks or chewed edges on boxes, furniture, or clothing, finding droppings or urine stains. While a mouse can be anywhere in a building, to check for rodent activity is best to check near points of ingress or areas where a mouse can find food, water, or potential nesting sites. Entry sites can vary and occur wherever there's an unsecured opening between the outside and inside of a building. Examples include holes where utility supply lines enter a building, ground level vents, or removable access panels. Kitchen areas, bathrooms, laundry rooms, and hot water tank storage areas are good locations to check because these rooms typically have plenty of entry points and can provide food and shelter for rodents. Other areas include inside of closets, particularly near the floor corners, around fireplaces and stoves, and in the attic, basements, and crawl spaces. So any building openings you see larger than a quarter of an inch, you should seal. Even if you don't see any ongoing signs of rodent infestation, this will prevent problems in the future. While mice typically retreat to secluded parts of the building, they'll enter a building the same way we do. If you leave a door open, they'll walk right through it. Poorly sealed exterior doors provide mice with easy inside access. When standing inside and facing a doorway, if you can see daylight or slide a pencil under the door, the threshold or door sweep may need adjustment or replacement. Although often overlooked, this is one of the easiest, quickest, and most effective rodent exclusion methods. You should examine both the inside and the outside of a building for signs of rodent activity or infestation. It's important to remember that excluding mice from buildings goes a long way towards reducing hantavirus risk. Building foundations should be checked for cracks or evidence of burrowing. In addition to sealing around vents, gaps, or holes in exterior service panels, soffits as well as siding should be screened to prevent mouse access. Any opening larger than one quarter of an inch diameter should be covered or sealed. There are a wide variety of construction materials available to fix rodent entry problems. Consult your maintenance staff for site-specific recommendations. Remove or reduce potential cover and nesting sites, harborage, in close proximity to structures. Keep scrap lumber, firewood, storage sheds, and dumpsters or trash cans away from buildings.
keep trash and recycling in tightly covered cans. Raise wood piles at least one foot off the ground. Clean up trash, brush, and weeds around buildings. Avoid storing any materials under building foundations that could provide nesting or hiding locations, for example, insulation or cardboard boxes. Repair leaks in sprinklers or pipes that might provide a water source for mice. Inside a building, do not underestimate the importance of good housekeeping. Food preparation and serving areas should be kept clean. Food should be stored in tightly sealed containers. Keep garbage in thick plastic or metal containers with tight lids and remove promptly. Do not leave pet food or water bowls out overnight. Reduce clutter and storage of excess materials that will serve as nesting materials or nesting locations for mice. Always follow recommended protocol when dealing with deer mice and other rodents. For more information to reduce risk for HCPS, see these related videos and CDPH brochure, Rodents and Hantavirus.